most important accessories if you're going to be using a night vision device on your head is going to be your infrared laser. Infrared lasers are basically the way that you aim the weapon because it's difficult, not impossible, but very difficult to uh, finagle your head behind your sights while wearing the goggle on your head because you got to line up uh, everything, you got to extend your butt stock, you got to cock your head to the side, you got to cant the weapon in. It's not fast, it's not smooth, and in a pinch, if you're in a real world situation, it could be problems. Uh, if you're out on the hunt, it could mean that while you're there dicking around with your gear, uh, you know, the animal gets spooked because they're hearing all sorts of rustling, and they run off, and well, now you just lost your kill. So, you really want to have an infrared laser on your weapon. The infrared laser can be uh, used in pretty much just like playing a video game almost. It's, uh, you're, you're not even uh, having to line up sights or anything like that. You're literally just looking through your goggles. You see the laser come up, the, the, the dot. You can, I mean, if you want, you could even shoot the gun from the hip. I don't recommend that, though, because if you're shooting from the hip, you, you're losing the mass of your body behind the gun. So follow-up shots, things like that, are a lot slower. So I tend to recommend that people still get a good shooting stance, good fighting position, uh, so that they can get their good hits and, and get good follow-up hits for their second sight picture. It's not really a sight picture because you're not looking through sights, but you know what I'm saying. So really you've got two types of weapons that you're going to be mounting most of your lasers to. You've got your long guns, you've got your pistols. I'm going to start out with long guns because that's what most guys are going to be taking out on hunts. One of the things with IR lasers uh, that we're going to touch on in another video is a full power laser, but uh, when you're talking about uh, the civilian uh, legal and individual uh, lasers, um, the full power class 3 Bravo lasers are, uh, they're, they're, they're not obtainable. So uh, the FDA did approve a class 1 laser, which is considered eye safe. It's a lower power uh, infrared laser, still invisible to the naked eye, uh, and oftentimes being manufactured in the same housings using the same components, just a different diode than the full power lasers. What we have here is a, uh, a LDI, uh, stands for Laser Devices Inc., D-Ball I-squared Class 1 laser. The D-Ball stands for Dual Beam Aiming Laser. And basically, it's just that. It's not just a clever name. You got your Class 1 IR laser, and you've got your uh, Visible laser. The Visible laser can be had in two flavors. You can get red or green. Green lasers are going to be a little bit more expensive because it's more expensive to manufacture a green laser diode. Uh, so you'll notice that on the website. But basically, um, you can use your visible laser for all sorts of things, communication with uh, a fellow officer um, or uh, who maybe isn't using night vision or a fellow hunter who doesn't have night vision. But the IR laser is what you're going to use to uh, to see downrange and basically, or I'm sorry, to aim downrange. Um, basically the class 1 uh, IR lasers are under 1 milliwatt. They're going to, uh, in fact, going to be about 0.7 milliwatt and what that's going to give you is about a 250 yard range. Now. When you consider that the goggle on your head, it's, it's a, a one power device. It's non-magnified. You don't want to walk around with magnified night vision because you're going to walk your ass off a cliff. Ask me how I know that. Um, basically, you're going to be uh, getting a detection range on a good night with a clear line of sight and good moon um, out you know, 800 yards or so with a goggle, with a good Gen 3 goggle system. But Ident or detection and identification ranges are two very different things. And your identification range with a night vision goggle is only about 100 to 115 yards with the latest, greatest Gen 3 tubes. So when you have 250 yard range of a class 1 IR, uh, IR laser, that's more than double what you actually need. So uh, you're, you're going to get a, a very good ping on the target for your point of aim, point of impact. So you got your, uh, your IR laser for, for work uh, under goggles, you got your visible laser uh, for work outside of goggles, um, and then uh, you can also get these in, in different flavors. Uh, if, if for your particular mission you don't need a visible laser, a lot of civilian hunters aren't going to really have as much need for a visible laser, uh, but we sell a lot of these to cops, and uh, I'm a big fan, a big believer in having a visible laser as a backup system, uh, as a communication tool, as a threat deterrent, uh, force de-escalation, um, things like that. There's, there's so many different ways that you can use a visible laser, so the D-Ball I-2 is actually pretty popular with a lot of law enforcement. 
Um, but if you want something that's a little bit less expensive because you only need the, uh, the, the class one uh, laser, then by all means, uh, you can get something like the OTAL or the ITAL, which are offset tactical aiming laser and inline tactical aiming laser, respectively. And that's going to be just the IR laser uh, for hunting um, or just, you know, sport shooting um, and, and screwing around uh, on the range with night vision. So we're going to move on to pistols because one of the things that happens when you're using night vision, you've got a fixed plane focus. Now you can adjust the focus to focus up close, uh, but you're now going to see everything past about 15 yards super fuzzy. And that's not going to give you good, uh, uh, good target acquisition. So basically you want to keep your goggle at your good baseline focus. And uh, that means that anything from about 15 yards in, you know, at 15 yards, it's going to start getting fuzzy, 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 fuzzier. At conversation distance, you're going to see just kind of a mass blob. That means that fine things, such as pistol iron sights, are going to be almost unusable. Uh, there are methods of engaging with, a, uh, with, with um, night sights on pistol. It's not quick, not easy, kind of like trying to engage using your red dot sight uh, on the rifle by just getting your goggle behind it. You can do it, not a, a, a engagement recommendation though from us. So basically what you need, you need an IR laser. So class one IR lasers are available for pistols. You can get them in different flavors. Uh, this particular uh, pistol is a Sig Sauer P226, and it is outfitted with uh, the latest Crimson Trace laser grips. I love laser grips. Any gun that I'm going to use in a social situation, I put a laser on. Because in a, in a real gunfight, hey, it's nice if you can see your sights. So uh, I, I like it when, uh, when I have that, that extra just quick acquisition, especially in low light situations. Um, now, this particular one is one of their new dual laser grips, so this is actually going to give you two different outputs. You've got uh, the visible laser and you've got your IR laser, and they both emit right here. So when you have a good grip on the gun, you're basically squeezing on the, uh, the pads on, the, uh, on, on the, the grips themselves, and it's going to emit that laser. And what's nice about the laser grips is not only are they on when you need them to be on, when you're drawing down on a target, uh, but it's also leaving your front rail here clear for the use of a white light. And any gun that I'm gonna use in a social situation, uh, if it's a bedside gun, things like that, or if it's a duty gun, I'm gonna put a white light on it because target identification is a huge thing. You gotta remember that if you're using a gun in a social situation, every bullet you launch has a lawyer attached to it. So you gotta make sure that you're very cognizant of what your target is before you drop the hammer. So uh, there are some other uh, ways you can attach an IR laser if you're not using the pistol in a social situation. Say you're using it uh, out on a hunt or something like that. Um, uh, laser Devices Inc. makes the LazTac 2 uh, laser and they make that in a class one IR variant, which is actually a 0.1 milliwatt. And that's gonna attach the same place that you see the Surefire light uh, on the rail. And uh, the nice thing about that is a lot of guys use the Surefire lights, so they're uh, already used to kind of that, that uh, condition response of, of activating the light this way, so they're going to activate the laser the same way. Um, but basically, the 0.1 uh, milliwatt as opposed to a 0.7 is going to give you a finer beam. So at pistol engagement distances, you know, about 25 yards and in, uh, you're going to get a finer uh, dot, you're not going to have as much of a bloom because that's one of the big things you have to keep in mind when you're talking about lasers is there's going to be a halo. You'll, you'll have your little dot and then a larger bloom at the point of impact uh, of the laser. And that, that halo can sometimes obscure the finer point of aim that you're trying to achieve. And with a pistol at closer ranges, if you try to put a heavier power laser on there, you're going to bloom out your target and that could uh, totally obscure the hog or the coyote that you're going after if uh, the gun is being used in a defensive situation or for law enforcement. Um, it could possibly obscure parts of, uh, of the suspect, um, making a more precision shot uh, almost impossible. So they did uh, knock the power down on those, um, on, on the pistols, uh, because it is a dedicated uh, device for a specific type of weapon platform. So class one lasers, they're, they're great 
Individuals can buy them, they're completely civilian legal. Individual officers can purchase them without a department letterhead or a department PO. Uh, they become very, very popular. So uh, one of the other things that, uh, that I should mention about class one lasers is that they're eye safe. Now the class three Bravo lasers, basically they can permanently blind someone. Those are the full power lasers issued to the US military. They can also be purchased by law enforcement on department letterhead and using a department PO, but they can permanently blind someone. Whereas uh, the class one lasers, uh, they're not gonna blind someone. Infrared cannot be seen by the naked eye. So you don't know that you're getting damage done to your eyes if someone is shining an IR laser in your face. If someone shines a visible laser, obviously you're gonna know, hey, I've got a visible laser, I've got a white light, something that's too bright, I'm gonna blink, close my eyes, look away, something like that. The infrared, that's, that's a no-go. You're not gonna know because your, your eyes can't see in the infrared light spectrum, therefore your brain is not gonna tell your eyes to look away or close or anything like that. So uh, it's very important having the class one uh, IR laser uh, for safety. It basically reaches out to all the points that someone is gonna need uh, for law enforcement, for, uh, for hunters, for home defense, all that sort of thing. So uh, class one lasers, extremely popular bunch of different ways that uh, that you can mount them places you can put them on the on the weapons and different weapon systems so thanks for watching we're going to have another video that's going to talk about uh, the full power class 3 bravo lasers have a good one